Hi, this is John Loftus, and you're watching Atheist Edge. What? So what's going on? I'm going to be shouting the the wrong words out <laughs> that you just said I shouldn't say. Just randomly, just drop them in the middle of something really important. <laughs> Cut it. Yeah. Um, before we went, before we started recording, we were talking about words that we can't use uh, in the current climate, and it, due to the, um, I don't even know if we can say pandemic. Maybe that. Ooh, I shouldn't even say that. Uh, Maybe I'll just. Put I can't wipe my face screen. either. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time. I'm just like, uh, I know. <laughs> Damn it. Um, yeah. So there are two C words out there we can't use anymore because if we say the name of this. Uh, illness that's going around or we relate to it at all even by its colloquial name then it looks like videos are getting demonetized so we'll stay away from that if we can um, <laughs> so you were you were just watching Rachel's video response to Ocean Keltoy's video what's going on with that is, is there a feud going so, on that I don't know about no 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 not oh, at all okay. so uh, I obviously did the interview uh, with Lance and then immediately that morning after Rachel did, did a response video and then Shannon did a response video and then Mr. Atheist did a response video and now Ocean has got round to doing one. He's He said he's wanted to do one for a while but now there's like new information that's come to light and he says, says yes this is now the right time to do a video. And the response is to your interview with Lance or to Lance himself or to or to that original conference? To the whole the whole saga just to try okay. and uh, explain everything to a new viewer uh, and to the polytheist uh, community, I guess. If you want to just give a quick rundown, and this would be a good way to segue into plugs, uh, you could plug the uh, upcoming event. But uh, it started off a conference there in England. Um, a bunch of people started pulling out because from what I can tell, I have limited knowledge on it. You brought it to my attention. Well, first you brought it to my attention that I'm up for a couple of awards. Te yeah. yeah. I mean, technically I brought it to everyone's attention. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then, <laughs> yeah, you, you were the sole yeah. Yeah, responsible for that. So I was, it's an anti-theist, uh, international anti-theist convention in England. Um, I'm up for podcaster of the year, which I don't know if I even consider this a podcast, but okay, whatever. And uh, yeah. <laughs> atheist video of the year. So I looked at it and I originally thought, oh gosh, what an honor. This is awesome because the actual video that is being nominated, we're very proud of. But then um, mm -hmm. thanks to you, I started digging a little deeper into the organi organizers of this event, Lance and is it Richard? Both of them seem to have said some yeah. pretty heavy-duty misogynistic shit in the past, and it looks like there's <laughs> a there's a huge uh, anti-woman streak through both of them. Am I close? Um, I'm not sure I would word it like that. I think that they yeah they they definitely have these particular views. So really, to just wind it all the way back to the very beginning in November. And I will try to be as brief as I possibly can. I interviewed um, Lance Gregorchuk, who was somebody who used to be organizing this event called Anti Theism International's uh, like Atheist Conference. That, that is a daughter company to uh, Atheist Alliance International, who are the uh. ones that hired and sacked David Silverman. And John Richards is on the board for that. And he's now the sole organizer of this event because he sacked Lance, given the, the misogyny that was shared on my podcast. And as such, uh, all these re response videos came out that I just mentioned. And then it got to the point where people started to drop out. Miriam Namazi dropped out uh, and Aaron Ra dropped out. Aaron's uh, going to now be at my event. So he, he was out of pocket. He was going back and forth because he was waiting for a... a uh, some money from PayPal to just go into his account so he could then send it back to that particular conference because he doesn't want to do it anymore. But obviously, in standing up for his morals, he lost out on a lot of money, which means that he uh, then got... Like, we crowdfunded his Airbnb. And we said, look, we're going to make your time worthwhile. Uh, yes, yes, you did. You you had a significant amount. I won't say... I, I, I shot him 150 um, bucks, but I I didn't know what it was for. Yeah. I just knew... Uh, the crowdfunding, it, it basically said that uh, he ran into some problems with uh, with lodging there at a conference. I didn't know much more other than that. So the show, yeah, we shot him a little bit. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's a lot. 
It's yeah. good. Yes. We're making a little um, bit of so money now. So, and, and I, I don't, <laughs> uh, here's a good rule of thumb for anyone watching that has a channel. If you're monetized and you're making money, small or big, um, take 10% of that at least out and, and put it towards other, other channels that you like. And, and that way it helps us all. You, you see, you couldn't have, if you reached any uh, point of notoriety or uh, 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 if, you got, if you've got any attention at all, um, if you've achieved any success in this medium at all, it can't be by your own hand only. Someone had to extend a letter down to you at some point. So now it's your turn to kind of extend a letter down to other people. That's how I look at it. Hmm. Not that yeah, Aaron Raw needs pretty. a letter extended down to him. I'm just saying help people, even though he's he's a huge okay. Anyway, no, that's a fair point. Um, he yeah, so he ended up um, then saying, look, yeah, I'll, I'll happy to do uh, an event. We didn't know what it was going to be at that point. I threw a few links out. This got various uh, uh, pieces of coverage and promotion. Lloyd Evans then sent me a DM on Twitter and said, look, I'm going to be available that weekend. I can extend my weekend. And it's now got to the point where I think he's only coming for uh, this event. And I think it might be uh, a podcast on Cosmic Skeptics channel as well. He's going to be doing day before. So uh, I'm really grateful for, the, for both of them to, to be coming along. Uh, I can't, obviously, given the words that I'm not allowed to mention, um, that is still going ahead as far as I'm aware, just to give people a, a quick heads up uh, at the time of recording anyway. So, um, Aaron, I just saw, I don't know if this is news to you. By the time people watch this, this isn't going to go out for another week and a half, unfortunately, because there's a couple things and I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. But, uh, uh, so by the time you're watching this, everyone will already know, but I just saw a post from Aaron Ra today. I, I, he's on a flight back from Africa, um, back from yeah. Doha, Qatar back to the States and he posted that he it's still, he's still unsure is he, if he's going to be able to make it to the UK for your conference. Because sure. of this so, illness, yeah. um, uh, an update on that in that case then because of well, a few hours before. So, I mean, by the time this is out, people will, will know and I'll give people an update this weekend, i.e. when this comes out last weekend, um, as to what we're going to do for the event. Uh, which is as I, uh, as it stands, still going ahead. Aaron uh, says that at the moment, given Trump's new ban on travel from Europe and to Europe, it is exempt uh, for the UK. Mm -hmm. And as such, Aaron, if he is permitted by the government to travel, he says he will travel. So, nice. I'm. I mean, I'm happy. You have to go ahead. So. That sounds great. That. Th I'm sure that's a huge relief to you. Um, you said that, okay, so Lance got sacked by oh, this guy, Richard, right? But Richard has some yes. issues of his own. So he, Oh, John Richards. John but, Richards. Yeah. Okay, okay. I call him Richards as well because oh, okay, it's I see. just, yeah. So both of them are <laughs> sketchy in a lot of people's minds. I don't know much about them. I, you, um, I dug up a, a few things that people were forwarding around like a you know evidence why maybe these aren't the two best um or uh, the two best examples of our community and why maybe going to an event that they organize isn't such such a great idea so and i based on what i saw whew, it was enough for me to say that i'm not i'm not going to be accepting those awards if i win them uh, for mainly for that reason, but also just because it seems like it's just some very uh, unprofessional. It, it was handled unprofessionally. First off, you're because we I run a uh, I'm part of a local atheist organization here, and we just um, we just had our solstice party. We let our nominees for atheist uh, organizer of the year, uh, um, atheist member, a local atheist member, and then an atheist at large. Um, our yearly awards. We let them know way in advance that they're nominated. Give them a chance to maybe write up a little something and acceptance speech, and th that's kind of that's protocol. So I got no notice other than you know, it, by the time you told me, it was already on the website. I already had this write up, which was kind of worded poorly. So I don't know a lot no of image. things. Huh? <laughs> no, no image. <laughs> no image. 
uh, they spelled my name wrong in one of the nominations. It, yeah, it was just kind of <laughs> kind of poorly done in itself. Um, so yeah, a lot of response videos. There must be a lot more evidence that I'm just not aware of. A lot of reasons why. And if you sit now, this is the first I've heard. If that is connected to AAI, Atheist Alliance International, that kind of yeah. makes sense because, um like my local organization, there's a member in it that used to be the president of our organization, uh, Randy Word. He was, uh, that, this is going down a big rabbit hole. I've heard from other people that there's kind of problems with that organization to begin with. So this is, yeah, it makes so, sense. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, I think um, right in saying John Richards is something like communications organizer for Atheist Alliance International. This is a company, as I said, that uh, group or whatever they are that employed David Silverman uh, and then sacked him three months later for fresh sexual assault allegations. David Silverman is up for atheist of the year at this event, these awards. And uh, yeah. Matt Delahunty's dropped out of that award. He, they were both going up for the same award. Uh, Aaron Ra, who is out of the event, he dropped out the event, was up for an award. He still is for atheist of the year. I mean, he's worth, obviously they're, they're worthy of getting it, but he dropped out of the event. <laughs> and, and I was, and ended, they ended have up to, being kicked. Yeah, so. they have to know why Aaron left. Uh, it was basically under protest and why they would still have him up for an award. And Seth Andrews, I, I heard also was up for something and he dropped out. Yeah. So I guess I wasn't the only one. Um, yeah. I think that's just Anthony a real Mike shame. Is as well. Uh -huh, because right. you and you and yeah, you and Anthony are the only ones left in the video category because we started a campaign straight after my interview to try and clip that bit of Lance and send it as the clip of the year in that particular category that you're now you know, 50 50 chance of winning <laughs> and i I've, I've been taken out of that category because i'm exposing something i see and my point is i'm too deplorable to get an award but david silverman who was sacked by their parent company he's um, he, he, atheist of the year you know <laughs> just um so he's done nothing in 2020 2019 2018 there's just nothing that's <laughs> Uh, yeah, in the write-up, all his notable achievements were not for 2019 or 2020. Just mm. they were from so way you're further going back. back to 2012. Yes, <laughs> like interesting. Um, Anthony Mendebosco <laughs> is such a class act. I mean, I really admire that guy. He he tried his best to stay out of this, but when when he was um, <laughs> uh, sucked in against his will. He tried so hard yeah. to try to stay out of this. I could tell because I kind of gave him a little heads up. I go, hey man. I hope you win this instead of me so I don't have to deal with all the fallout. And he's just like, oh, man, I just tried to stay out of it. He tried his best to stay out of it. And he's still doing his best. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so if Lance has sacked this John Richards guy just as bad, so no one's considering going to the event. Um, so yeah, now this is what prompted you to start your own thing because Aaron – I think you did it mainly because people already had t people that already had travel plans to that other event. You said, Hey man, I don't want to screw people out, out of their chance to come here. Maybe they've already got maybe re unrefundable tickets. So you said, Hey, let's just go ahead yeah. and start another one from scratch. So, uh, yeah, just to try and flesh out the claim here because we, because mm -hmm. we shouldn't just, claim stuff uh and so our position in the community it'd be very odd if we then became very theistic so uh everyone can go see my interview with uh, lance and drp 96 and see for themselves particularly the last 15 minutes as to the evidence as to uh, lance's demeanor uh, and his views um particularly towards uh, sexual assault and then john richards tried to save face afterwards in a very odd way in that he only got back to people on Hemant Mehta's blog and he didn't see any of our stuff on YouTube, which is fine. He's probably not uh, that prominent on it. He's not, not on it so, so much. And then he ended up going on Shannon Q's channel, uh, said various different, very odd things, including asking whether she was going to be in the kitchen for Christmas that, okay. and that sort of thing. That's yeah. So then people were like, uh, interesting interesting sound, uh, sound good. hopefully everyone that you i hope this illness doesn't affect your attendance 
I think it's probably going to, you know, realistically, it's got to affect it a little bit. I hope it's still successful. I really do. Um, w when is it, actually? I want to make sure this video gets out before the actual event. It's on the same date as their event, so the 4th of April. 4 April. So it, I'm going to write that down. It, this has to get out before 4 April so we can plug it. Okay, and um, shoot. This was just an idea I was thinking about since Justin Brierley is in the area. He's not an atheist, but all right. If you hadn't, yeah. if you hadn't reached out an invite to him or maybe for future ones, cause I could see if this is successful, I could see it becoming a yearly deal. It'd be, it'd be kind of fun to see. Yeah. I mean, he, he's kind of an, although he's a believer, you know, he's got a lot of fans in the atheist community too, just for how, um, you know, I try to mold my show kind of after his or, you know, just the unbiased, um, the trying to look at it from both sides, the building bridges, you know, the finding common ground type of, yeah. So he might be a, a good idea yeah, for his, future ones. On that, he, I mean, his position has been outlined with various different fallacies. Uh, he's, he's somebody who's a, a Christian podcaster over here in the UK and I've spoken with Steve, so I always like to have some sort of exclusive tidbit uh, on every every time I'm on somebody else's channel. And me and Steve have uh, had a very minor back and forth about doing future events, about doing debates and knowing how to fund them and create what is essentially paid opportunities for these sorts of speakers in the community that can then make a living out of doing this because it's it great the activism is great for the sake of activism at the end of the day but if you can spend more time doing it then making it your job is you know it's, it's kind of important so i'm very interested in trying to um help out in that that respect so you said things steve, like that steve, might, who, who, which steve are we steve talking woodford about? sorry oh, oh okay Rules. gotcha the gotcha. one i'm on stage with at the event yeah awesome um, just so That's happens right. yeah. uh, yesterday just by the had time, to pray. <laughs> oh, nice. By the time people mm. are watching this, the video that I recorded with uh, Kyle Curtis yesterday will have already gone out. So that'll be in the library. Uh, yes, you are correct. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That, that reaction is, is a correct reaction because it's not even out yet. And uh, so I, I'm not, we are so polarized and, and tribalistic right now as a community. It's, it's just uncanny. I had Kyle on specifically to, uh, for my own redemption, because I wanted to first and foremost apologize for the way I treated him when that whole thing started. Um, I, I committed a series of horrible blunders. And if you want to know, you can go back and watch that video, but this was to apologize. This was for me. It wasn't for him. Um, when it was when certain parties learned that I was going to have him on, there was some trepidation, of course, um, and some coaching of ask him this, ask him that. Okay, uh, you know what? Uh, that's not the main point of the show, but I, I the the show's not even out yet, and certain parties. I'm not saying it's Steve McRae in general, but people maybe who support him are saying that I threw him too many softballs. I let him walk all over me. Um, I didn't hold his feet to the fire. That's not the point of the show. And if you go and watch it, I cut a two hours down into an hour and a half. So it's an hour and a half at, where I say at least three times specifically with, uh, there, there can be no ambiguity here that I think that he did Steve wrong. And they still say that I threw softballs. So I, I don't know. It's, it's, I can't win. I cannot win. You know, these two tribes, when I try to open up a line of communication between the two, you know, there's a way you probably had people on your show that you don't 100% agree with. And you I've, let them, yeah. you challenge them, you let them know, but you do it in an amicable way. It seems like if you're nice to someone, people perceive that as, oh, you agree with everything they say. And it just ain't the case. I don't know. It's I'm rambling. No, it's a perfectly valid point because I had Kyle on straight after the um, slavery debate on non-sec. That was the more recent um, 
controversy before the, the actual split. And I did, I got a fallout from various people I, who I've had on the podcast who have now blocked me on Twitter several times for some reason uh, since then. And, you know, my, my position is exactly the same. You, you have to talk through these things. If people are willing to talk, then they're, they're far, I know we're on the internet, but they're far less likely to then resort to aggressive violent means. And so if people have, as, as far as I'm concerned, violence is for people who don't have the articulation to express themselves and that's to convince point. somebody that they are wrong. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. I don't know the solution to that. That's, it's a tough nut to crack. And um, I will say that uh, I don't think I'm going to lose any friends over it, at least. I, I really no, don't. No, I think it's fine. I, I, I really find it very interesting to talk to him again. I, I was supposed to, while everything was still um, in the middle of the uh, hurricane, as it were, um, I'm, I'm fascinated to see how this plays out. Yeah, like I told Kyle, um, there's only two people that are involved in this. Everyone else is an armchair quarterback. There's no, there's no reason, reason to fight and take sides and, and then dig up irrelevant dirt on the other side just to make them look bad because you want your side to win. It just gets so fucking messy. Just let the legal system work itself out and you can give your opinion without being a jerk or I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's called DaveCon. The original conference was called a conference. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you if you know the difference. So I'll, I'm just going to ask the viewers. Now, with atheist events, they are usually either conventions or conferences. Tell me if, if, if this is correct. In my mind, a convention is more for the fans, for the viewers, for the you know, for the, uh, um, uh, the people that are coming there to see them. And that's when you have the booths and the events and the tables and uh, interaction. And it, it's, it's, it's for the fans. Uh, a conference is more internal. It's, it's, uh, it might not even be open to the public sometimes, but a lot of most okay. conferences are open to the public. They're there. The fans can come and watch, but it's really for the creators um, uh, networking amongst themselves. Do you see it that way? And is that the distinction you draw between the two? So I, I realized I did call it DR conference and now I'm calling it Dave Khan. And I know that it's initialized as DRC, which then allows me to say it could be conference or convention mm -hmm. uh, to, to allow me to be sufficiently ambiguous. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, people are obviously massively encouraged to come and ask questions and meet them afterwards and get stuff signed. Actually, uh, at the end of the Unra Lloyd Evans debate, they're going to, uh, the, the audience is going to get to vote on who they thought was the most convincing, just as, as a bit of fun. And all the speakers on the night will sign a, an official uh, DR t-shirt. Actually, I can probably find one uh, oh, for wow. it. And uh, then, yeah, they get to take that home. We'll, we'll pick a name out of a hat. Oh, dude, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. Uh, shoot. So, wh why did that, why did we originally want to come on? We wanted to talk about. I guess we're kind of already talking about it. We're talking about what led up to this, though. And I said this would make a great episode, Dave. And you said yes, let's do it. <laughs> what was it in regard to this whole getting these uh, me turning down the nomination and why and yeah. Okay, and, and platform and of individuals. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you just said David Silverman has fresh charges. That's news to me. So he, he, he was so, president of AAI for about three months. And I know he stepped down. I didn't know he was fired. And I didn't know it was due to fresh uh, sexual uh, harassment charges. So I think to try to correct and clarify that, he was president of uh, American Atheists. And that right. was where he was sacked the first time. Went through a long time of being accused. Hasn't had anything go through court, but there are very, some very convincing um, arguments that have come through. Obviously, the evidence, the like, video recordings and stuff just aren't there. Mm -hmm. So uh, he obviously won't be put through a court law. Uh, then he went on to, I think it's, uh, I, don't, I don't actually know what his specific role was. He wasn't uh, president of uh, Atheist Alliance International, but he was some 
uh, manager of regional okay. manager, whatever it was. He had a leadership so position he, in it. All right. Some leadership position, let's say. Oh. People can quickly Google it, I'm sure. And uh, he then got sacked three months later, uh, which would have been November in 2019. Oh. Uh, so roughly that time. Uh, because of a fresh allegation against him touching somebody's back. Now, as as much as that to me sounds like somebody who's just tapping somebody on the sh- on the shoulder to to get their attention. Like I don't mind if people touch my shoulder to get my attention to turn around or whatever. But I d- I don't actually know whether it was like a uh, hand going down the the back like a stroke or something like that. I. I actually don't know the specifics, but it was obviously sufficient for him to be sacked by the parent company of the company that now wants to give him atheist of the year. So, does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> um, after he got fired from American Atheist, uh, the, law- the, the lawsuit was still going. I knew about the lawsuit. I did not know that there was a gag order on at least one of the parties on the defense side. Yep. Namely, uh, Matt Dillahunty and then the female that was involved. I don't know if her name is already out there. I'm just, just to be safe, I'm okay. not going to say her name. I know who you're on about. Yeah. Okay. So we, I think if you don't know the general story, you guys can look that up. But um, uh, I didn't know that there was a non-disclosure agreement on one side. And we had already booked David for the show. And so we had a date. We were set to go. Uh, I received word that, hey, the other side can't right now at this time uh, uh, respond to anything that he says on your show. So it might be in your best interest to it, at least postpone, right? Um, so I, our show is, I'm not the only host, so it's a majority vote. So I put it to everyone. And it, let's just say it was not unanimous, but we voted to uh, go ahead and cancel that show for now. And we still haven't had him back on now. And then with all this, of, of course, even, even when I gave Silverman our explanation why we're going to go ahead and cancel, um, I, I don't want to make this sound, how do I make this sound as anodyne as possible? Uh, he, he, was, he was upset. He thought that maybe I was being influenced by the other parties, which is not the case. We're, we want both parties to be able to respond equally. That's what it was. And I think he understands now because we're back talking again, which is good. And, and, and we're okay. still, uh, I, I, it's not out of the realm of possibility to have him back on the show, but given the, the news, the new situations, let me ask you, Dave, would you have David Silverman on your show right now, given everything that's uh, hanging over his head? Um, not right now. It, it was a, uh, an idea and we, we did end up getting an email or two back and forth. And then, um, a very trusted law mod said, uh, that it would actually be quite a bad idea. And in hindsight and, and others, uh, of course, and in hindsight, that broad coalition that came together for their opinions, cause I, I deliberately asked them for their opinions. They were just unanimously no. Uh, they they were right at the, at the time of me asking. I think waiting for this to die down and then saying, "Oh well, let's look back in a few years." That could work, um, but right now, no. So, in terms of actual actually platforming the um, particularly you know Silverman or, or somebody like um, Lance Gregor Chuck or uh, John Richards or whoever it may be, you you can platform these people i'm not just saying that to you specifically i'm saying that just in, as a general statement if it's an interview where you are specifically talking about this issue and there's no other interactions and there's nobody interfering with us right now uh, barring the dogs and whatever and uh, yeah uh, then that's great because you can really get into the detail and if you're going to have a, a, an interview with somebody and you're going to let them elaborate in full and then really pin them to the mast when it comes to specific details and nuance uh, then that's great but if they're accused of doing something at a conference and then you want to platform them at a conference it's like eh, there's, there's a problem I see. there i see so I, it depends on the platform i was going to draw an analogy to say a journalist that goes into a prison and interviews a, a convicted serial killer they, you mm. never 
no one ever gets mad at the journalist for going and interviewing them. Yeah. So no, in the same sense, but if you have, says, you're a murderer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. But now if you get a, a, someone who's committed murder or this is a great analogy. Some, uh, Steve McRae had someone on a show. It wasn't murder, but it was a, it was a similar pretty heinous felony. He, yeah. he had committed it. He had done his time. Um, I'm not going to even say the guy's name, but uh, yeah, I, having I him on the mean, show, they weren't even talking about, they didn't even talk about why he went to prison. I mean, his co-host, Kyle Curtis, is, a, is an ex-con. No one ever said anything about that. It wasn't, and now there's different degrees of yeah. heinousness of crimes and, and what Kyle was convicted of was not against people. But uh, sometimes... I, I don't know. I, I don't understand people's thought process, like if you have them on the show. But again, yeah, you're right. If if you have someone, if you invite someone to speak at your conference, that's a different animal completely. Like uh, who, who's that ATI, that that um, anti-theist conference is still going on. Yeah, It's still going to happen. Yep, and their tickets at the moment. Last time I checked, uh, they've probably gone up since okay. uh, the last time I checked. But they, right. they're now the the highest one for the VIP has gone up to eight hundred pounds sterling, which is over a thousand dollars, and that will include, uh, admittedly, uh, I think two nights in a four star hotel for some reason. But it's the only way you can get access to the, the speakers and talk to them and get signatures and stuff and pictures and it's like. That's not really in the, you know, in the right spirit of no, it's what not. we're trying to do here. That's kind of ridiculous, I think. Uh, it, it's, uh, what What would you say to people who are who believe in in the justice system so much that the rule of law, and no matter what the allegations, if if there have been no convictions. Uh, guilty and to prove an innocent type. So you got Silverman, as far as I know, so, yeah. there has no, been no criminal charges. And so we, let's say a conference X wants to platform him and then everyone blows a gasket, but then the people would say, Hey, listen, let the legal system do its course. He's, you know, he's not up on any criminal charges. If, if someone wants to levy some against him and then he's, you know, we can deal with it then. But how, how would, what would you say to that? That's fair, and we have to treat people as innocent. Um, full stop. I have to add to that that there are very specific claims within these stories and these allegations, which are not only like not being um, denied by the particularly uh, those that are being accused, uh, but they're being positively affirmed. They're saying, "Yeah, I did do that." or do very specific things as part of the story, but that's not how it flowed and that wasn't the context or something like that. So um, admittedly, when, when Silverman talks about um, the, I think it's the specific BDSM play he was doing mm -hmm. and there were very specific phrases taken out of context, then fine, yeah, that, that probably was true. Uh, that sounds believable. But when it comes to somebody like um it's probably a, a bad example but when uh lance then comes forward and says uh, when, when i asked him about the christina rad incident um and I, I clarified the specific claim was put in his uh, hand under her skirt for lawrence kraus like that's a, it's like it's it's such a bizarre she, she's a very credible source in that respect um and then he t immediately turned around and said, uh, not only he, he had clarified previously in the podcast that he knew Lawrence very, very well, very personally, but he also replied to that saying, I don't know how many times I've put my hand under your skirt, but you didn't bitch once. That's a very was, odd thing to, to yeah. say. He was joking, so say, but he well, implied, he, he was implying that, hey, every man's received mixed signals. Every man has made um, uh, gestures or made advances that were unwanted. And so he's no different than any of us. And we're all guilty of what he's guilty of. And it's not that big a deal. That's how he kind of 
played it off, I think. Right? Yeah. So, in, so yeah, in, in Lance's case, he, he even stopped himself mid sentence and said, yeah, I, I probably did a few things, throw me in jail. And it's like, well, I don't have evidence. I can't put him in court, but like he, he's like, pretty much on the verge of admitting some sort of yeah something and so yeah. it, it's such a fine line when he's pretty much admitting to something but obviously i don't have any evidence for it so i can't then go to the court and say well okay so we have to treat him as innocent rather than guilty but he's he's almost admitting it <laughs> like yes. not in a way that i could just say oh i'm a murderer like that's just flippant and uh, you know, I'm obviously not, but he's That's actually saying, point. yeah, yeah, I did it. Yeah. Put um, in jail. yeah, f- there's far worse offenses that tribes will polarize on and it doesn't have to be a sexual assault. It can just be a, uh, a civil case, you know, um, the, just the, the shit being logged back and forth on the, on the non sequitur thing. And, and, that, and that's over a, a 30,000 subscriber channel on YouTube. That's all it is. You know, it's, uh, and, and that's enough for people just to break right down the center and, and, uh, you know, lob stones at each other. It's, and that's what I was doing when I had Kyle on. And I think I might've stirred up more trouble than original. My intention was to try to open up some lines of communication. And I guess one, Certain people perceived that um, I was too easy on them, and I don't know. Well, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll let have people, a look at it. Yeah, it'll be out um, Wednesday next week. So, uh, what else? Okay, so it, as far as the preparation for getting getting this together, do you have people helping you? Is this a solo project? Do you have um, do you have uh, you got people marketing it, and it, you know. Uh, I, I'm sure I've never put a, something on the scale together, but just the financials and the, the, the bookkeeping and the treasure, you know, the, the, the book yeah. making part of it has to be kind of insane too. Just to walk yeah, us so, through the I, whole process of where you are to, to get you where you are now. Sure. I'm sure the, uh, the link will be down in the description to this uh, yes. video anyway, and people there will be able to find the full finances uh, to the event it will cost me in total what i want to be able to spend uh, will be about two grand oh. uh, in uk money so that can be recovered with about 120 tickets or so which is still two-thirds of the tickets need to be sold that's in, not terrible to, to, to achieve that i was thinking a much so, bigger number as it, far as um upfront costs i mean so i can happily go over the very specific costs the the event itself uh, the, the venue, rather, uh, I always get those words mixed up, uh, will cost £750, which is very cheap for five-hour hire in London, proper, like central London. This isn't yeah. like, this is congestion zone. Like, this is real, like, in the heart. That's um, awesome. And so that was that was profoundly cheap. And then that is, is, is cheap because it doesn't necessarily su- supply everything. So you then have to do, I have to do the audio-visual on the night. And I'm going to end up going live on stage with Russian Anti Rules while I have to do the, the live stream as well. And so <laughs> there's going to be a very awkward start and beginning, uh, start, start and end to that particular live stream. And Dave Worley does not have a, a dedicated production manager. I mean, you're, you wear all the hats, yes? I will give credit to those that have promoted. There's obviously moderators, there's people like Faye, uh, the most gracious, who's been on, is going to be on stage that night. Zara K, those sorts of people that have put their name forward for volunteering on the night. It might be like holding a microphone for people. There's uh, Jeff Breeze, the godless scammer, who's going to be uh, helping out with that as well. Like little bits that you don't see just off camera um, that obviously need to be a- acknowledged. And then uh, in, in terms of actually corresponding with the venue, getting the guests together, getting it, it properly marketed, getting the artwork out that, they're made getting it wrong and then correcting it and then doing it four weeks later again because i fucked up (laughs) and i'm now happy with it so uh yeah that all those little little bits um bringing the security on board uh trying to work out how much to get for catering not even like knowing yet what how much catering i'm going to need because 
people like Aaron Ra or Stephen Woodford, they've promised to do promo over the next few weeks that might be out by the time this, this video uh, goes up. So um, it's very difficult to try and balance that with all the deposits that have to be paid two or three weeks prior <laughs> to the event. And so it's just a big balancing game, especially with the thing that we can't mention as well. The just illness thrown yes. the spanner. Yeah, into the mix. But that's as crazy. I said, it should be going ahead as far as recording is concerned. Yeah. The only thing of a even that even uh, comes close to that scale is uh, once a year I help our local atheist group uh, put together a little solstice party. We had Seth Andrews speak at the last December, and Matt Dillhoney was this December before that, and it gets two hundred nice, people yeah. or less, and it's a free event. It's BYOB, but that carries with it. Now we have to hire a local cop yeah. if there's going to be alcohol on the premises. So that's 400 bucks just for the cop for the day. And so that the costs yeah. just start adding up before you know it. And, and you can go under so easy. And so um, it, yeah, oh, yeah. it's free to come in, but we have a, uh, a silent auction where people are encouraged to bring atheist related you know, books and materials and, you know, and, or it doesn't even have to be atheist related. We have a table for that and we have little sign up sheets and it, it's donated. So then people, we auction it off and goes to the highest bidder. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and so we make a little, we try to make money here and there where, where we can just to break even, but um, having oh, Stephen Woodford, see, he's a controversial character too. You've got him booked. Are there people yeah. that are, Saying, Dave, what the fuck for him? Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's a great guy. He's got a, he's got a beautiful heart. He, and I said in an earlier show that there is, if, if you think there is an ounce of anti LGBTQ in him, you're, you're delusional. And it, but there's a lot of people that are just out to get him too. having him on, having him involved. Is, is that, is, are you yeah. experiencing a backlash? So, uh, just clarify, uh, that the event has three sections. So past, present, future. So the past is Aaron Ra, Lloyd Evans debating their old religion against each other in a bit of a fun debate that they've agreed to. And then there's a women in atheism or panel or women panel that's talking about the future of the movement and where we're going to go, uh, which is a very important reason as to why this event came up in the first place. So the, the middle bit is done about the present with me and Steve. We've got some very important things to be discussing, including how we go about having discussions, um, how we address people who are traditionally on our side, which we're calling the left or the woke or whatever words you want to use, but they seem to be damaging our reputation. And as such, people are turning away from us because our arguments are good, but we're those, you know, those people like extinction rebellion that are digging up the lawn at cambridge university trying to make some environmental statement it's like what are you doing this is not the right way to go about the argument so we will discuss those sorts of things and um, before his controversial trans video he did a second referendum on brexit video in which he said he very marginally voted for leave and then six months later i did a response video because i'm a remainer and so we're going to end up having that uh, discussion on that as well. And so there's the Remainer and a, and a vote lever coming together to have a rational conversation about how to you know, have proper discourse, as it were. But there are those who would say, Dave, you're skirting the issue. Um, why don't you, why are you being so easy on him? Why don't you hold his feet to the fire for the mistakes he made on the trans stuff? You, you see yeah, how this, easy it this is, is to a just specific get... quote. Right. Um, oh. uh, well, they'll, I, I, they'll see. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for our community right now. And I, I said on that interview with Kyle as well, uh, with, yeah, that um, I am just thoroughly, I, I'm embarrassed to call myself a, to be a part of the atheist community right now. As much tribalistic infighting there is. And if I, you know what, there was a time when I was an active duty Marine and I would bust through a hatch and there'd be 160 Marines there. And I had an aura, a, a, a physical presence where I could, I could make some things happen. I was a positive influence for these young Marines. And I feel like I still have that. I just need to re-harness it and use it for this. And I want to be 
at least in some small part, that example for others to emulate. And I'm going to take all the flack for having Kyle on my show. I'm going to take all the flack for having Steve on my show prior to that and in the future. Um, and I'll probably have Silverman on the show. Uh, we'll probably re-invite him at some point. And I'm going to take a lot of flack for that. I know in particular, just having him on the show, even if I give Matt Delaney a, uh, a, an opportunity to come on the show as well and rebut, or maybe even have like a three, I'm sure neither of them would be open to a, a, a you know, a one-on-one, -on -one. but you know, to uh, yeah. separate interviews. Um, I, I, there's no way he would be down for that. And I'm going to catch a lot of flack. I don't want to make any enemies, but I'm not going to tiptoe. I don't know, man. Yeah, I agree. You you, you have to um, engage in this conversation. The only way that you're going to end up resolving any particular issue is actually working your way through it, and it's going to be hard, and there's going to be shouting, and there's going to be various different disagreements and misunderstandings and straw mans and logical fallacies. But at the end of the day, you, you do end up looking back and thinking, yeah, okay, I was too harsh on this specific it and i should have pushed him more on this and this is, people if people are rational enough then people will understand that you're not supposed to get it perfect the first time and that at the end of the day they would be acting in a sanctimonious fashion if they were to treat themselves as if they like let butter wouldn't melt like oh i would have done it perfectly and then they go on youtube and their, their first videos that like, got the camera off at one angle it's like hello <laughs> the mics are somewhere over there and they sound like the, <laughs> over in the background somewhere it's like oh, come on like, yeah, it's true it's true um yeah i you can't please everybody i'm gonna do what i think is right i'm you know you, there's going to be controversy. Just, I think too many people right now are thinking with their hearts instead of their heads. And if we can all just calm the fuck down on all these issues, just calm the fuck down. And it, yeah. here's the example I want to emulate for the rest that others emulate. Keep the lines of communication open because once you seal off an echo chamber yourself over here and then block everybody that, uh, that thinks differently, all the opposing viewpoints, that's when the, no progress can be made. So we have to think with our heads instead of our hearts. We have to keep the lines of communication open. And this yelling, mat, the yelling back and forth doesn't, doesn't help us a bit. Let's, let's stay fucking calm. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, an exclusive um, tip bit, if I may, just uh, yeah. throw it into the mix. Uh, I've been going back and forth over the past couple of weeks or so to get um, Travis Pangburn on the podcast. who's just, uh, obviously, platformed Dillahunty and D'Souza uh, a debate. Oh, uh -huh. So uh, uh, I've been trying to work my through, way through that one. Um, obviously, we're all very busy, so we can't watch two hours all, all at once. That's interesting. And so I, I saw, I've got a lot to push him on, for sure. Um, I, I just saw a recent post or a tweet by you. I haven't had a chance to even see the D'Souza debate. So you said, mm. was that you that said that Matt just thoroughly trounced him? So I'm anxious to, to see that. Or um, that might have been somebody else. I'm, no, I didn't say, uh, I haven't said anything on it uh, oh. on Twitter. I think, uh, I, I certainly wouldn't have worded it like that anyway. But he definitely seems to come across so far from what I've watched from it as very, um, he's, he explains things, uh, Matt explains things very thoroughly and very articulately and you, you can just understand matt's position straight away and to be fair so far dinesh d'souza uh, has also asked some interesting points and it's, it's got it, it's been very polite and they both seem maybe um a bit uh maturer than their um reputation that precedes them suggests because Mac can come across as very shouty on atheist experience. Dinesh D'Souza can come across as an idiot on some debates he's had with Hitchens. But them both together were actually sounded very mature, like they were looking back and they were talking about Hitchens and they were talking about various different trans issues or whatever it may be. And it's actually a very good conversation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything against talking to Dinesh 
to be honest. Uh, I guess I wouldn't either. I mean, it depends on the host. Yeah. Uh, I've had people on that are known for being loudmouths, and or uh, I had Otangelo Grasso on the show, and he's he's been kicked off of three ca- call in. Uh, he's kind of just a fan. I don't even think he has his own channel, but he's he's. Uh, okay. He's known for calling, he calls into the Atheist Experience and Truth Wanted and those shows down in Austin. And he's been banned from all of them. And so he's got kind of a bad reputation for being a bad actor. But when he came on the show, he was, he was articulate. We stayed calm and rational. And yeah, I would love to yeah. have him back on the show. So it's sometimes, sometimes it's on us, the hosts, to try to mold that conversation, try to get, you know, because they will adapt. If, if you come at them loud, they're going to come at you loud. Dinesh has always seemed like just a, a intellectually dishonest to me. Like he's just trying to win yeah. an argument in, instead of seeking truths. But yeah, I guess uh, he's a felon too. So anyone who platforms a felon, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, illegal it- campaign contributions. Yeah, you can't know everything about somebody before you platform them, hence the Lance incident. And <laughs> you end up with uh, various people saying, oh, did you know this about this, this person? I said, no, I didn't. And then there's others that automatically go to the worst possible interpretation of what you said. And uh, when I was on In Time, back when Ansgard Odinson was a uh, host, he ended up describing me as somebody who was sufficiently firm but gave people maximal charity and that's in, entirely true because you've you've got to give people yes. the benefit of the doubt did you actually mean the most extreme version of what you just said if you if somebody like let's say take that incident the other day on twitter where richard dawkins was talking about eugenics he's an evolutionary biologist and I don't think for a second he was saying in that initial tweet, yay, eugenics. He, he clearly wasn't. He, he clarified later with further tweets. It's like saying, I, I'm not saying this, but I am factually saying it achieves its goals. And that's why we're scared of it. We wouldn't be scared of it if it doesn't work. There so, are drama yeah. merchants that want to seek every opportunity to take something out of context just to smear people. I think... I think there truly are just, I've never understood trolls that just do it for the lulls. I've never been one of those guys. I behave the same in real life as I do online. And there is no dark version of me that loves to see people in pain. But I think those people exist. Unfortunately, it's yeah, yeah, sad. Uh, What else, Dave? God damn it. Now we haven't, you've been... We've had you on our show once. I've been on your show once, and that has been it. And we've been, we haven't done a show together in forever. No. Are you going to Faithless Forum 3 by any chance? I think it's likely, depending on the thing we're not talking about. Um, oh, <laughs> and, yeah, no shit. Yeah, a, a flight from uh, the UK as it stands, or at least as of tomorrow night or whenever it's going to come into force is perfectly fine still so well your yes. thing is april 4th oh they're the faithless form this year is not until like june i think it's pushed back a little i mean yeah. theoretically, it, you it, could, it, yeah. it may may be extended you never know with this guy <laughs> yeah that'd be kind of cool if you if you came maybe if not this year then in, maybe in the future but um it's yeah, moved down I, to Austin. I definitely have to Sorry, I, I definitely have to wait until after my event for the financing right. reasons and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, but I, as far as I'm aware, the, the tickets are still available. And uh, I won't find out till May if uh, a certain someone can put me up for free. Um, I mean, they won't be for free. They'll, they'll get a ton of stuff thrown at them, English chocolate and that sort of thing. Uh, but mm. yeah. Your will, lodging you know, is an issue too, it, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge cost. It, I worked it out to something like it could be in excess of or well, close to two thousand dollars, just on flights and hotels and whatever. So anything that could be reduced, travel, you know, yep. and the tickets itself. So if, yeah, uh, I, I if, should be down there. And I oh yeah. oh, it, it, if it if you're, I'm I'm really hoping this is a success. It's getting a lot of buzz, which is a good sign. I mean, a lot of people are talking about it. 
if, if it's as successful as I hope for it to be, maybe it becomes a yearly thing and I'll get off my ass and get my passport renewed and, and, and shoot over there next year. So that would be fun as hell. Yeah, I, I certainly would look towards doing it annually because uh, it, there's def- definitely a scope for it. There's, there's also a scope and I think a, um, a desire to have a very fresh, new, young approach to this. It's not necessarily... Um, a, 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 it's, m- the conference is not meant to be a circle jerk of people coming together and all agreeing with one another. I have me on stage with Steve. We, we do disagree on stuff. And we're going to be thoroughly going through it. And then it's probably with the time we've got available, it won't be enough. And so we might end up doing another event sometime where we're together and uh, which we've also discussed and uh, various other speakers. I won't specify, but I know they profoundly disagree with one another. Um, They may or may not be on the same uh, panels, but it's, yeah, it's a broad coalition, as I said. And, um, all too positive discourse. Oh, speaking of in time and uh, Ansgar leaving, do you know who took his place, right? Do you know uh, yet? Hmm. Oh, gosh. Uh, who was it? I'll give you a hint. Somebody on <laughs> my show. I got, oh, I don't know if anyone, I haven't made an official statement. We had four hosts. I don't know if you know TJ. He was one of our hosts, TJ Tuttle. He's, yeah. he's left Tuttle, the show. Yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably, do a separate short video explaining what happened there. We, he left on good terms. Everything's good. He's starting a gaming channel. And so um, nice. yeah. there was a little bit, there was, there was a little bit of, uh, I, I'm not going to say conflict, but we, we had some disagreements, but he left of his own volition. So there's just three of us now. Courtney is splitting time with us now to do in time as well. So she's the official permanent co-host nice. replacement over there. So she, she promised me she'll never leave me, which is good because at first I was like, oh, you're going to end time. Oh God, please. <laughs> she makes the show. I mean, when anyone, when any big YouTube show wants to have Atheist Edge on, sometimes I hear about it later. Courtney will say, yeah, they invited me to, the, oh, okay. I see how it is. And I'm fully prepared. I'm the dumbest of the three of us right now. Chris and Courtney are head and shoulders. They, <laughs> but you know what I do have? I have drive and determination. So if I end up behind the camera and just do the editing, at least, you know, former Marine, I know where my strengths are. My strengths are keeping people held to a schedule, setting deadlines, holding people accountable, making the show run from behind the scenes. And I'm perfectly happy. And, and that's where I see the future of this show. It'll be less and less of me and more and more of them. But if we lose Courtney, that would be a huge hit. So I told Nicholas, Hey, I'm happy to share her, but if she tries to, if she tries to leave, man, we're going to have problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. shit. How long has that been? Oh God. We've been talking a little while, haven't we? Okay. Well, this okay. would be a good time maybe to just give people a, uh, just an overview of, of your event and uh, the times, dates, locations, uh, maybe a little teaser on the speakers and where they can find more information about uh, registry. Sure. All of the available information uh, to date is um, up on warleydr.com, uh, W-O-R-L-E-Y-D-R.com. Uh, that involves everything. That's just my personal website. So that involves everything from the podcast to, to the gaming that I do and the, the conferences uh, itself, and including the merch that arrived, um, which was um, unveiled on the channel the other night. So, uh, yeah, the event itself, they'll be cut into three parts on uh, 4th of April uh, in London at David Game College. We have Aaron Wright and Lloyd Evans that are debating in favor of the old religion. So Aaron, Ra- Aaron Ra is going to argue in favor of neo-paganism and the Lloyd Evans will argue in favor of Jehovah's Witnesses. The audience will then vote for their uh, most convincing debater, as it were. So it's not necessarily whether they're, they're right, it's just how convincing they are. So they're really going to try and get into character. <laughs> Dog, sorry. <laughs> yep. Nelson, you better That's shut right. the hell up, boy. All right. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that and then 
that's all right the the middle part i find at these events there's a lot of people that are c constantly asking is any of it going to be live because it's it's one of those things that is really in the moment and that's what i could have uh, maybe will speak with travis pangburn about in that these videos get released so much later it's like uh, we've, you've missed the moment so we're going to be live on youtube with stephen woodford and we're going to be talking about uh, the the current climate the political climate polarization uh, maybe go into different uh, topics like feminism or the woke or the trans issues it, we could touch upon so many different aspects of um just going about our business with discourse and epistemology and uh, just not assuming the worst in people, I think is the, uh, the main key theme on that. That's a great, sorry to, but that is a really, I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Assuming the worst in people, that's what's happening. Okay, continue. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's exactly what's, what's happening. Uh, and the, the final part of the event is a, very positive uh, all woman panel um, with Rachel Oates, Saf from the Sinning Skeptics, Faye the Most Gracious, and Lilandra Ra. And they're all going to be, I mean, that's, that's already a broad coalition of uh, atheists that are coming together to discuss actually anything they like because I'm not going to give them any guidance. And it's hey, really I'm partly being responsible left to for them. that. Remember, I was the one that, uh, that put, planted the seed in your mind. I said, if Aaron's bringing Lalandra over and she's a public speaker in and of herself, I was the one, remember? I was the one that said you ought to book her too. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if you were the me. original. I'm going to say oh, you really? are okay. just because I'm on this channel and I want this to end. <laughs> Oh, really? So someone had already Amicably. mentioned that before me? <laughs> someone had already mentioned that before me? I think I, I think I invented words, so it must have been me. Um, <laughs> Son of a bitch. No, you, it's, probably, it's probably you. It's probably it you. was me. All right. I'm taking credit yeah, for but it. Yeah, that, but that's... Uh, oh, yeah, she's... <laughs> that bit's left completely she, um, open. She's very uh, prolific in local government. She goes to city council hearings and state-level uh, state level, um, uh, meetings and... and uh, speaks um for separation of church and state or um anti pseudoscience and, and she's very politically active and yeah she's a good speaker it's that'll be good yeah um and also just to speak on some of the the other ones as well um saf does a lot of just the audio podcasts of interviews with various different people that really can't give away their identity as it were. So um, that's from within ex-Muslim circles. Uh, Faye the Most Gracious, I had on the podcast uh, as of recording last night, and she had uh, an attempt on her life when she was 20 by her own dad uh, for her apostasy. So uh, obviously Rachel Oates has been back and forth with Kent Hovind. Um, so this is a really interesting coalition that's that's forming for that particular panel and i am very interested to see how that one's uh, going to play out on the night and there's obviously q a for all of the different panels and you can meet them at any time we're, we're all you know getting our tea and coffee from the same place just you know hang out and it's, come join us it's a great thing and uh just england itself there is so you know when people think atheist youtuber everyone thinks austin or at least broadly the United States, but everyone thinks right here where I live, this Texas area is the hot, we're the Mecca. So it, I guess it is, <coughs> but there is still, I mean, a huge, oh, like uh, our channel, 40% of our viewership is not even in the United States. And most of those um, are in the UK. Now there's a little sprinkling of uh, Hong yeah. Kong, Australia, Canada, um, and then the rest of Europe. But UK is the, the uh, substantial percentage of that 40 percent so there's a lot there's a lot of interest over there and i don't think there's enough there's i don't think the number of events over there are matching the demand for it so i think you might be on to something this might be a really good thing i have high hopes yeah on um, uh, me too i think i'm right in saying all the different like the largest atheist groups in the world um third i think is freedom from religion foundation uh around by where you are then it's oh, yeah it might just be 
the UK in second, uh, and then somewhere in I think like Finland or something like that. But they are uh, that it's compulsory for them to put down something on like a form at some point. So uh, they have the most atheists that put atheist down or non-believer or whatever. But in terms of not it not being compulsory and it being choice, we are the largest. Oh wow! Group, we're 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 majority. We have gone over fifty percent in this country irreligious. So, oh right, you're talking like just citizenry, yeah. the population being religious. I think so. Or not. Oh yeah, the number of now, members. Or something, although yeah. I consider where I am right now the hotbed of of let's say YouTube atheism, not just atheism in general. Uh, it's not that the this is deep red conservative Bible Belt which I think plays to our advantage. I mean, there's, you know, how many times I've gone with Aaron Rod to a, a mega church protest or, you know, so there's lots of, we've got an NIFB church right up the street. We, we protested every Sunday, uh, anti-gay church, and they're right here. So it, it it's actually works to our advantage. What I'm saying is, so as far as population, no, it's very religious here. I'm just saying, um, mm. just so happens the, big, the, the biggest players in the game just happen to live with all within five hours of my house which is just damn you yeah. know it's damn lucky it's for me yeah Aaron <laughs> lives literally 30 minutes up the street he comes to our he comes to our studio for our dumb shows and it's just yeah it's, it's crazy and Seth Andrews is just a few hours up you know up in Oklahoma you said FFRF that's up in like Michigan or Wisconsin so it's quite a yeah it's on the other side of the country it's way north but yeah Anyway, oh, let me plug uh, what I got going on. I think, uh, yes, this video should be out before this, but guess who we are going to have in studio on March 27th? Frank Ooh. Turek. <laughs> Holy shit. Yay. This is his second appearance. The first time he came, Chris, my co-host, kind of got into it with him. It was a very, very spirited debate, and I think Chris came out on top of it, and this is maybe next to William Lang Craig, this is the um, Christian apologist. And just to have him in the same room as us answering our questions and, and having a dialogue with him, that's just insane. So we're, we're lucky. Um, uh, the atheist and Christian book club, we're, they're always getting just incredible authors into that thing. And it, it's, uh, it, it's a good deal. We've had Richard Carrier, uh, we just had John Loftus. We flew him down for it. So that was fun. Yeah. So that's March 27th. Um, do you have any other shows scheduled or any other upcoming events? But all you're just probably laser focused on this uh, conference, right? Pretty much the, the podcast itself. Cause I do a, a podcast that you've, we've already referenced, um, a lot in this, uh, uh video. I've got, uh, Aaron Ra coming down, uh, onto the podcast with uh, hopefully with Lalandra uh, on the 28th um, it's a week before the actual event and okay. so we're going to just do a, a promo thing there the, there aren't that many things going on there are some things that are on in, in the background uh, and I'm going to end up being on one or two other channels um, but things haven't quite been confirmed yet so nothing Oh Dave before so I much. forget um we did a banner campaign here locally. It was in No God We Trust. We oh, yeah. were, oh, you know about the banner campaign, okay? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it was to point out uh, our national motto is In God We Trust, and it used to be E Pluribus Unum, which means uh, out of many, one. We were, it was a push to try to get back to that original motto. Of course, it was a futile effort, but it was more uh, <laughs> just an awareness raising thing. But this organization, Metroplex Atheist, that I'm a part of, they really, uh, go out of their way to make sure it hits the press. So what I'm asking you now, I don't know, it might be something untapped. I don't know if you've explored this yet, but I don't know how it works in the UK either, but press releases, maybe going on syndicated radio, going on non-atheist, like secular, uh, you know, um, regular radio stations or uh, having the press come out, whether it be TV, radio, uh, uh, bloggers, uh, you know, other outside sources to come in and uh, other journalists to come in and uh, during the event or promo be uh, uh, beforehand. Have you thought about that? Sorry, having those sorts of people at. Yeah. Um, well, uh, have, you, have you considered maybe 
doing a press release to bring the press to the event or prior to uh, the event, maybe going on local radio stations and, and pushing it? Um, not, um, not specifically, only because the, the target audience, I don't think, is there. It's not in that Probably place not. anyway. So it, it would be uh, relatively straightforward just to end up going in a laser focus on other people's channels. And I was actually speaking to Steve Woodford on the phone about this. It's like, I don't want to be that guy that says, okay, you now have to go and promo my event, but it's like, you have a massive channel. <laughs> Could you <laughs> do Could something you? about it? I so know, right? he, he completely agrees. And yeah, he, it, I think he's, again, by the time this video comes out, he's probably going to have released that video, but uh, Rachel, it's, as we referenced to just released a video uh, literally before we went on, on the recording and yeah so Steve's doing a video I think Aaron's going to start doing some uh, some promo as well so um, it's, it's kind of difficult to, to judge how much and where to go to without dipping into the budget as it were. True. I would argue though that although you know it seems reasonable to assume that everyone that would come to the event and at least knows about the event now, I would argue that, and this is from experience, there are certain pop pockets of the population that don't watch YouTube. They don't know about you. And these, there, there is a percentage of the population that is completely unaware of our community that would come to an event like this. So other, other means of reaching out to them. I, it's just an idea. It, yeah. It's worked yeah, for us no, in the past. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there are certain things, especially when you've got a campaign like the uh, No God We, we Trust thing. It is about trying to get onto platforms that people are watching and people are typically watching, uh, who are watching or listening to radio or whatever it may be, those platforms you used, um, involves quite a lot of the people you're trying to get this message to. We and did so, so many... I feel, I, oh, yeah. go ahead. No, I was only going to say that uh, I think it, it feels like a lot more or at least it feels a lot more like a youtube conference it's like a uk faithless forum more <laughs> than a yeah a given given the guests that are available on the True. night yeah i don't know it was an idea so um yeah. we did yeah, so many right media idea. interviews for that banner thing i mean oh bbc was there even um Go courtney did a interview with the guardian so everyone i mean there was canadian okay. and of course I, i'm the only one in the Different organization things, i yeah uh, the uh, um, I'm the only one in our organization that I know of that speaks Spanish fluently. So when Telemundo and La Estrella TV came, I had to do a few of the interviews as well, which the first one, I just blew it right out of my ass. I mean, language is a perishable <laughs> skill. So I, when Telemundo said they were coming the next uh, couple of days after that, I, I, I hit the books and I mean, yeah, I, it, it all depends on the actual campaign itself and whether you you want this to end up going national as it were because there's no limit on the number of people you would want that message to get out to yeah uh, if a billion people had seen it you'd obviously be great if, if a billion people wanted to try and come to the event i'd be like oh shit yeah what is <laughs> the, what is the maximum capacity of your venue um i've i yeah i've said I've, uh, before that i've been snarky on this uh but it i i shit you not this this is exactly the numbers so when i was interviewing lance he said he sold about 30 tickets at the time for 108 they were looking about 180 people to go to their event and given the the venue that i'm at and the, the seating that doesn't quite sort of uh, align with the staging quite right i have 181 182 tickets now, Damn, I, I, I haven't tried to like be snarky here. That's genuinely like the amount of seats that are quite good seats to have. And some of them are just like, you can't quite have a good view. You're side on to the stage of looking around and it doesn't look quite right. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, but see, I don't think in terms of competition, but you're right. And you know, that does, it, it would be, kind of a win if you outsold them i didn't even think of that but it seems like you're no. you you are set to outsell them uh you, you know uh, um, i don't know maybe 
it's not it's not as important to me at least it's it's more to do with getting a sufficient crowd to then cover the costs and that's yes. that's good enough for me well yeah. the very first faithless forum was held at a children's museum up in here in dallas and uh i i don't know it might have had 50 people and it's blown out of proportion now it's just insane and oh i just looked at the prices isn't it yeah yeah i just looked at the pricing yeah. wow it shot up that's why Courtney is going to go to the entire event and I'm going to, she's, she's kind of reluctant to just walk up to um, uh, panelists and get interviews. TJ and I had no qualms about it last, the last two times. We'd just walk right up to a son of a bitch. No, hey, can I have 10 minutes? <laughs> Let's do this. You know? So we were getting lots of interviews. Uh, hopefully Courtney will do the same and just, uh, it's kind of cost prohibitive at this point. If I went to everything that they offered, that, I mean, that adds up quickly. So at best, yeah. I might, I might just drive down there and hit the after, the after party is only 35 bucks and maybe I can get some footage there. Yeah. Uh, and especially if I am there, then I'll, I'll definitely come say hello and, uh, you know, awesome. buy you a drink, or whatever. And we'll, we'll sit down and we'll, um, watch the world burn. <laughs> right yeah you might want to stay over there it seems like we're getting hit with this illness way way worse right now in fact i woke up with a head cold this morning i'm not saying it's related but boy my sinuses are draining <laughs> right now it's it's insane all right yeah, dave well thanks system, yeah. thank you so much for coming on and i'm going to make sure this gets out in time to to uh help you um push your event i i i, I hope that it exceeds all expectations. Thanks, man. Yeah, I hope so too. It, there's a, a a lot of effort that's gone into it, and there's, there's a lot of things that don't get um, considered uh, by the mortal peasant uh, <laughs> that, that might be watching this. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I joke, of course, but um, there's definitely something to be said for people who go to these events and might end up having, say, that they're getting an event for free or they're getting an event for a five or a ten or whatever. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and they don't actually know how much things cost. It's a bit like not knowing how much your prescription tr drugs cost or how much it costs to n miss your dentist appointment or something like that. It's like if people know, then they're not going like, to behave in the way that sometimes they do. And we, we do get a, little, a lot of opposition. And I've already had messages saying, 20 quid is that i mean that's just outrageous and it's like no 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 it's, that's covering costs i'm i it would be lovely to make a profit if i sold out it would probably make uh, a grand which is great um but in terms of um i mean that money would go to future events anyway but trying to create as i said paid opportunities for these content creators, even so much as just to cover their travel costs, um, it would be, you know, uh, so much up to 50 quid each. And then you've got the venue, which is 750. And then you've got security, which is 360. Um, that the wages themselves could be for that many speakers, 400. And then you've got catering, catering, geez, it, they charge it. I, I know you were trying to wind this one down. No, that's fine. <laughs> but, yeah um the, the the catering for different venues is very interesting so i can get at this uh venue it could be two quid per person for tea and coffee so for 200 that's 400 just tea and coffee it'd go up to 600 if it's uh with biscuits so i'd be spending 200 quid on just biscuits <laughs> For, for everyone. So I'm obviously there's so many different options that I could take. And I, I, I haven't taken that option. I'm just going to do tea and coffee, but you have to really try and balance it out and try and see, you know, how, what's within the budget, what could be um, thrown in there. Given that we've also got two international speakers, Lloyd Evans on his own back is coming. Aaron Ra had to, we had to crowdfund his flight. Uh, it's, uh, airbnb rather and it's like yeah yep these these things do cost well, that's how stuff. they start like, that's it, how they start and then it grows from there um like faithless swarm other events it's a separate cost for a dinner so it, it's a it's an additional and like a vip dinner yeah. with the speakers and that's an outrageous but you know uh, people pay that because of well it's 
Yeah, and just so it additional and, fees. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't yeah. try to eat all those costs is what I'm saying. Um, I, I'll end with this. David made a really good point and it, it really hit home with me and it ties directly into the interview, which is already on my channel now with uh, Kyle Curtis. So if you go back and watch that or you watch anything, any channel, any video from here on out and you vehemently disagree with somebody, do what Dave just said. Don't assume, assume the worst in people. Do not assume the worst in people. Like Stephen Woodford has a good heart. Essence of Thought has a good heart. I know his heart's in the right place. I disagree vehemently with his shit. I'm not going to sling mud at him anymore. I did it with Kyle Curtis. I yeah. fucked up bad. What I'm doing now is dusting off and getting back on the horse, and I'm going to try to set the example and rectify the wrongs that I've committed. And I hope people do the same. Kyle Curtis is a good person. I, I can see in his heart he is a good person. Whether you think he stole non sequitur or not, I, I think he's genuinely a good, decent human. A, de a good, decent human. I think Steve McRae is a good, decent human. Even though he can get, he can let his emotions ride and he wants to fight the world and he wants to be belligerent and stubborn and pig headed. And I hope you're watching this, Steve, because you know I love you. But it, it, most of us, with very, very few exceptions, are just decently good people. Sometimes they're misunderstood. Sometimes they're taken out of context. Sometimes they they made it. They made one error that you shouldn't. That you should take that error in and of itself and and disregard it when you're talking about something else in their life. You can still express your disapproval. That's fine. We're, don't assume the worst in people. I like when you said that. That's that's the that's the theme of this talk. I think. Awesome. Anyway. Yeah. Thanks so much, Dave. And uh, don't be a stranger. Let's let's try to do something again. Let's not not let's not yeah, let sure. so much time pass this time. Yeah, definitely. I'll um I'll, I'll probably end up having some space straight after Dave Con anyway, April May. Okay. I'll try and uh, get, get get you back. Sounds great. All right. Take care now. Awesome.